Okay, now that we know what pressure is, it is time to explore how we're going to go about measuring pressure. First, a few conventions. So, in the previous video, we discovered that the pressure varies in the z direction, or with a change in elevation, and it is given by the pressure is equal to the negative rho gz plus c. Now, you all probably already know, but let's discuss how we're going to find this uh, constant of integration c. Consider a fluid-filled vessel open to the atmosphere. So at this point up here, we have atmospheric pressure. So the fluid is within this vessel here. This symbol here indicates that we have atmospheric pressure at this elevation. So to solve for this constant, constant of integration C, all we have to do is uh, use a boundary condition. So we know that at an elevation of Z equal ZS, S standing for surface, the pressure will be equal to atmospheric pressure. So we just substitute this in. So P atmosphere is equal to negative rho G Z S plus C. Which tells us that C is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus rho G Z S. So the general solution is that the pressure as a function of elevation z is equal to rho g zs minus z plus the atmospheric pressure. OK. So two terms to be aware of are absolute pressure and gauge pressure. Pressure can be reported in either of these forms. Absolute pressure is measured relative to a perfect vacuum. On the other hand, gauge pressure is measured relative to the local atmospheric pressure. That is, if we're interested in the pressure of a certain fluid, is it the gauge pressure will tell us how much above or below the local atmospheric pressure that fluid pressure is. So in our study of, uh, of pressure and fluid mechanics as a whole, we'll make frequent use of standard atmospheric properties. These are generally idealized values gained from time-averaged middle latitude, latitude conditions. So for example, standard temperature in SI units is assumed to be 200, 288 kelvins. Standard pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. And these are widely tabulated in uh, textbooks and can be found online. The measurement of atmospheric pressure is accomplished using a barometer. In particular, a mercury barometer is often the standard. A barometer is simply a glass tube closed at one end. So it is closed at this end over here. The open end over here and over here is open to atmospheric pressure, and it is immersed in a mercury-filled vessel. So all of this fluid over here is mercury, which has a very which has a very high specific weight. There is a vapor at the closed end over here. To satisfy equilibrium, the weight of the mercury in the tube plus the vapor force must balance the force due to atmospheric pressure. 
That is, the atmospheric force or pressure must be equal to the specific weight of the mercury multiplied by the height plus the vapor pressure, v P vapor. Typically, the vapor pressure contribution is negligibly small, and we can just ignore it. Since mercury is the most used barometer fluid, it has been conventional to report atmospheric pressure in terms of millimeters or inches of mercury. That is, reporting this height in the tube. Standard atmospheric pressure is roughly 29.9 .9 inches of mercury. Note that if water were used as the working fluid, with its specific weight being much lower than that of mercury, the standard atmospheric pressure would require a tube of over 34 feet in length. Another way to look at this is to start at this point over here. So if we say that this is PA over here, we know that the pressure varies according to negative rho GZ. So we know that PA plus rho G and then multiplied by the height H will take us to the pressure at this elevation over here, which is just P atmosphere. Okay. And since PA is the vapor pressure and it is relatively negligible, then we just have P atmosphere is equal to rho G H, where H is the height of mercury in the, t in the tube. So this was how we measure atmospheric pressure. Now let's talk about measuring pressure in engineered devices. This is usually accomplished using liquid columns arranged in vertical or inclined tubes. These devices are called manometers. So let's look at a few. The first one is a piezometer tube. This is the simplest type of manometer, consisting of an open vertical tube attached to a container in which the internal uh, pressure measurement is desired. That is, we want to know what PA is. So what we can do is simply work our way from PA to the open atmospheric pressure. So we know that there will be, since this is fluid statics, we know that there will be no pressure variation between point A and if we call this point over here, point 1. So PA PA is equal to P1. And we know that if we start at this point over here, which we'll call point 2, P2 is equal to P atmosphere. Now if we want to find what P1 is, so P1 will be equal to P2, or P atmosphere, plus rho g multiplied by h1. So recall that the pressure inside a high density fluid increases with depth as we work our way down the fluid. So we are started starting at 
P atmosphere, and we are adding this term here, which takes us to P1. And we know that P1 will be equal to PA. So PA is equal to rho g h1, where rho g can just be um, reported as the specific weight, plus the atmospheric pressure. Now recall that we can um, report pressures as either absolute or gauge pressures. So this would be what we call an absolute pressure. Now, if we wanted to report it as a gauge pressure, then what we do is that we subtract the atmospheric pressure from the absolute pressure. So recall, gauge pressure is how much above or below the atmosphere, above or below the atmospheric pressure, the actual pressure measurement is. So this pressure measurement, PA, is only gamma H1 above P atmosphere. So this would be the gauge pressure measurement. Finally, we look at the U-tube manometer. Introducing a U-bend into the manometer has a few advantages. First, we can use a gauge fluid with a higher specific weight than the container pressure. This allows for the ability to measure the pressure in a gas. In fact, we can measure very high pres uh, gas pressures using this type of manometer. The pressure at PA, which is what we are looking for, can be measured by repeated application of the hydrostatic relationship given here. That is, we can walk through the manometer from one end to the other. Now let's do this uh, with the goal of finding what PA is. So, going from point A to point 1 over here, there will be no pressure variation in that particular fluid. So we can say that PA is equal to P1. So recall that there is only a pressure variation with a change in elevation. Now recall here we have two fluids, right? We have a fluid uh, given by gamma 1, which is the fluid that we are interested in. And then we have the gauge fluid given by gamma 2. And this is what is inside our YouTube manometer. Okay, so within fluid 1, given by gamma 1, there is no variation between PA and P1, given that they are at the same elevation. Now, the pressure at point 2 over here will be equal to, we can say that P2 will be equal to P1 plus gamma 1 H1. So we are adding, the pressure is increasing as we are going further down into the fluid, so in the negative Z direction. So this ends the analysis in fluid 1, given by uh, the green hash marks. So now we work our way through the gauge fluid given by gamma 2. So between point 2 and point 3, there is no variation in height. So we can jump straight to point 3. So indeed, there would be an increase in pressure as we go down here, no change in pressure as we move across, and an equal loss in pressure as we move back up to point 3, which is at the same elevation as point 2. So we can say that P3 is equal to P2. We can also say that P3, which is equal to P2, is equal to the atmospheric pressure up here plus gamma 2 H2. So if we start from here and we work our way down, the pressure is going to increase 
as we work our way down to the fluid. All right, so this is our result. So what we can do, given that we know that PA is equal to P1, we can substitute this in here. So we can say that P2 is equal to PA, which is what we're looking for, plus gamma 1 H1. And P2 is equal to what we just found here, which is P atmosphere plus gamma 2 H2. So we have PA plus gamma 1 H1 is equal to P2, which is given by P atmosphere plus gamma 2 H2. So solving for the pressure inside the container, which is what we're interested in, it's equal to PA plus, sorry, PA is equal to P atmosphere plus gamma 2 H2 minus gamma 1 H1. So this is how we perform the analysis in a U-tube manometer. So this is what we call the walkthrough method. So we go from one point in the U-tube manometer and walk through to the other end of the U-tube manometer. And these are very useful um, measurement tools, particularly in their ability to measure gas pressure. Note that if we increase the density of the gauge fluid, we can practically measure even larger pressures. This, however, comes at the cost of resolution. On the other hand, decreasing the gauge fluid density increases the resolution, but limits the range of pressure measurements possible.